So your tilapia, you should have like a small tank so that way you can uh, take the babies and grow them out, get ready for the bigger tanks. And as you can see, there's a lot of duckweed that's floating in the tank. And then also there's uh, moss that's growing. And so you can actually grow that in any body of water. Um, and I'll show you how we do it. But anyways, I just fed them their, uh, their moss and their, uh, and their duckweed. And so it'll take them a while to get through that. But you can see, they'll tear pieces off like cotton candy. And then uh, they go to town on it. Now your, uh, your tilapia, they're omnivores. So they eat meat and they also eat vegetables. So this is a good little staple. So in a survival scenario, if you've got an aquaponic system, you got to be thinking along the lines of how you're going to feed your fish if the commercial um, feed wasn't available. And uh, any bodies of water will carry this. Stagnant ponds will have the moss, and uh, some of your lakes and stuff near the dams and stuff will have your uh, will have your duckweed. And so, it's a pretty prolific uh, growing uh, plant, and it's ideal for tilapia. Tilapia love it. They they swim through that and eat that like crazy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and show you how we're producing that in our greenhouse and so so what we got to do is uh, I don't know if you guys know about duckweed but duckweed will double in size so if you have something the size of a quarter you're going to uh, if you have something the size of a quarter um, it's going to double in, in size when it comes to that and so oh, let me go turn off the music for uh purposes of uh music rights so there's the big boys right there and they're thriving they're doing good bottomless pits anyways uh we got a kentucky green bean and uh we got a tomato i tried to transplant some tomatoes there just from the cuttings but i think i should do them in water it's all trial and error but there's my plant if the fish dies we bury the uh, fish in the, in the tomato plant there's an old wise tale that says that you should put your fish with your plant. Seems to be working pretty good. That thing's already about breast high. Anyway, so what we got is one of these uh, long baling uh, water containers. And all we do is we put some fresh water in there. And then uh, what I do is my filter separates the settable solids. From, it goes through that, it goes through the skimmer and also through the bottom and it sucks into the pump and it gets uh, put through this bead filter. That bead filter separates the poop. So what I'll do is I'll come over here once a day and I activate this and you'll see that poop will come through there. You can see all the chunks and stuff that's coming through there. All right, once it goes clear, you shut her off and now you've backwashed that whole thing. And so now that goes into this pickle tank. We got aeration going to it. So it aerobically breaks it down and so it's really highly concentrated fish crap. And if you can see under there, that water that's dripping, that's nutrients. That nutrients get pumped up and it goes to your beds. And so, and you can see, I, I planted those probably, I wanna say probably about two days ago. And you can see the roots are already going crazy in these things. So, and this is a good, uh, it's a good crop right here to grow in the hot sun in Arizona. So, anyways, and so that's how we get the the, the basically the fish poop. And so uh, we just take a container, a gallon container up there, and we fill this up. And then what we do is we come over here and we feed this tank. And so, and as you can see, there's tons of duckweed and there's tons of moss. We were having problems with mosquitoes, so what we did was got those mosquito pucks from, uh, they last 30 days. So you put those pucks in there, and it won't hurt the fish, but you can see into the, if you see deep inside that water, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but that moss goes all the way down to the bottom. So, these, uh, these duck weeds, they will double in size. So if you have something the size of a quarter, you come out the next day and it'll double. This was all dormant this last winter and it all sparked right back up. It was just waiting for the right temperature. 
Now, duckweed does not like aeration. When I first started this, I would put aeration in there, but it made that water too turbulent. And so you don't want that. You want it to just be stagnant. But you can see, reach up under here, it pulls the whole mat. Look at that. So that whole place over there is full. The, thing, the whole thing's full of, uh, of, of moss, green moss. And uh, now people will be concerned about putting the moss. They'll be concerned about putting that moss in their, in their home fish tank. And um, if you're a hobbyist, that's fine. But I'm not doing it for hobby. I don't care about looking at my fish. I enjoy watching them. But I don't care what they look like. They don't have any plate gems. They don't have any. They just have an air stone. No pebbles on the bottom. Easier to clean and do water changes if needed. But um, they're solely there in that house just to, out, to grow that tank and be put into that one. So we're about to harvest probably about probably about 50 or 60 uh, large fish. And then uh, once we get them harvesting them out and filleting them, we'll vacuum seal them and then we'll bring those babies out here and we'll start growing them out here. We'll take two male or one male and a female and we'll put her out and put them in the house tank. Now your tilapia are mouth brooders. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, tilapia, they uh, they breed in the mouth. So what will happen is, is the female, she'll drop eggs, she'll suck them up off the ground, and she'll hold them in her mouth. Now breeding is going to be impossible in here because the filter is going to take it up. So I, you know, I'm not worried about little babies being in there. They do all, once the temperature and everything is correct, they spend the time and, and they will go through the motions, but... Um, you know, a lot of times they'll just get sucked up by the filter and the eggs go, get dropped. But anyways, she'll pick those eggs up off the bottom and she'll keep them in her mouth. And then a male that's fertile and, and uh, he's in he or whatever you want to call it, they, they, what they do is they turn their genitalia inside out. And when they turn their genitalia inside out, it looks just like a fish egg. So that female, she'll get up underneath there and she'll nudge that genitalia on the male and then that's when the insemination happens. What he'll do is he'll melt in her mouth and then uh, basically their mouth is, you know, they're constantly bringing fresh oxygen and water in and so it's constantly uh, like a tumbler. And so, you know, like trout, you know, they've got to have, you know, constant, you know, fresh air or water flow going over them. And tilapia, when they're, when they're breathing, um, they're turning those eggs over and then the eggs will, uh, will come out as an eye, uh, they'll, get, they'll get dotted and then basically, uh, They'll start hatching in her mouth, and uh, it'll get to the point where she can't um, she can't keep all of them in her mouth, and so that's when you get your offspring shoots. Anyways, uh, hopefully that was informative for you. A lot of people don't understand, or, or they don't, you know. I've had people ask me about the breeding of these, and uh, so I figured I'd just give you guys heads up, you know. And probably the two most important things is uh, plenty of oxygenation and uh, and a good filter. Don't spare any costs. Don't DIY that stuff. Because uh, your whole entire system depends on the quality. If I pull this, uh, if I pull this hose up, you can see how clear that water is. That water stays clear like that all the time. And it's just because we have the right filter. Yeah, I know, you guys are pigs. So that kind of gives you an idea of kind of what I'm working with and, uh, and uh, how my system works. We got, uh, we, we got this system up here. I planted this bed up here. So that way we can, we ended up having to do a lot of, uh, about once every other week, we would have to do a, a water change because the nitrates in high quantities will kill your fish. And so I got tired of doing water changes. I thought it was a misappropriation of water usage. So what I did was, is I knew because we built this decoupled system, basically the fish is different from the aquapon or the hydroponics because it's split right here. The, the water doesn't return back to the tank. So the water quality issues with the decoupled system is important to understand. And so you want to build something. I just welded up a stainless steel rack. I took one of those Rubbermaid commercial 50 gallon. Uh, it's like 189 liters, 190 liters. I filled it up here with this hydroton. This is actually uh, Psycho clay balls, and it's uh, CYCO. Anyways, uh, it's the same 
same stuff, just a different label. And so anyways, and so strawberries are going crazy. We got, you know, runners going crazy. Um, these bolted because they were, uh, they, I didn't have this light up here. But as you can see, things do great in here. You know, look at the, look at the buttercrunch lettuce. Man, we've been harvesting off that thing and it just, yeah, you take one off and three grow. So anyways, uh, having one of those is ideal. Um, you just, you know, put your spinach in there and stuff, let it grow. And uh, it's going to use the nutrients that's not being picked up by the uh, nitrous simonis and nitrous bacter that's inside the filter. Anyways, hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, if I don't know it, I won't be essy. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll look it up. Anyways, uh, hopefully you're having a beautiful day. Be blessed and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you again. Please, uh, my, my daughter tells me I got to make sure to tell you guys if you could hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then the bell button. I guess the bell button gives you notifications when I post a new one. Anyways, hopefully you're having a beautiful day. Be blessed and we'll talk to you soon.